the Thoughty Orty podcast. I guess the the next person I want to talk to is Dreadnought. And um, would you like to tell us a little okay. bit about your neurodiversity and yeah, how that yeah, sort of influences me. your creativity? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, as we mentioned before, ADHD. Um, to be honest, like, I mean, like, I was creative long before I even thought about ADHD, to be honest. It was only a few years ago that I actually got my diagnosis. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like, there were, like, major obvious signs, which I was completely oblivious to through like, the past. Yeah, it tends it to was be me. that case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I was just like, I, I didn't really click until later, until I started, like, looking into it and putting everything together. And I was like, it was basically like a tick box when I was looking through symptoms and stuff. I was like, okay, yeah, I guess I should yeah. get this looked at by a professional. <laughs> um, but it was like... Was there, um, was there any, like ignition to you to you doing that was there any reason why you started to look into it yeah um it was, it was i actually looked into it and got my diagnosis it was um and my mental health in general was kind of deteriorating quite a bit at that point um i was struggling with quite a lot of stuff like um i was like severely depressed super anxious and i wasn't myself but i also kind of was aware of the person that i used to be and i strived to be better and I, there was that like hunger so i was like i need mm-hmm. to get to the bottom of who i am and everyone had like already like I'd already heard like years of jokes of like ADHD boy. I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Um, but that was one of the first steps into it. And then it was more. I didn't want it treated. Uh, I just wanted to kind of be able to understand myself better. And so know, that's where one you, of the, know where you are in life, and yeah, you know, what yeah, kind of yeah. Things that you're good, yeah, you're exactly. perhaps a bit better at, it, and which areas you might need a bit of support with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, exactly. Uh, when you you know when you when you understand. Like in this case, when when I understood ADHD better, I understood how it worked. Uh, I also was more open to speaking to other people with ADHD. Then, like suddenly, it was like, oh, okay, I've got this. I can I can interact with these people and ask these questions, which relate to myself, which I otherwise might not have been able to like understand that I was actually on the same level mm-hmm. as them. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. So yeah, it, yeah, it, it was um, it, it was an eye opener, and it definitely set me on a much better path. I, you know, I'm I'm, I'm I like to think I'm pretty mentally healthy right now. You know, everyone has like the days where it doesn't feel like that and you feel like you're backtrack, but it's so much easier sure, to get back sure, on top of yeah. stuff. And I think having that understanding was a massive thing. And uh, then I look back at all my music and I'm like, oh yeah, actually, the, 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 like, the signs <laughs> were just right there. Uh, besides, well, is it like uh, 150 BPM songs and stuff like that? Like... But then it was it's just the mad things that I was trying as well, and I just thought I was just just being a bit creative and odd. But it's like I've been trying to do like hard style metal and like just merging <laughs> like jazz with like reggae. You just like all these mad combinations that I was just putting in. But then there'd be projects that were like a minute long, and I'm like, I'll come back to that. And yeah, my desktop yeah. was flooded with hundreds of projects. Hundreds, literally. Just, yeah, just, most yeah. of them were unfinished. <laughs> the ones that were finished were, um, they, they were of different standards, but like they were ever growing. Um, but it, the signs were always there. But that energy and that spontaneity, I think, really, really helped from the production aspect. Um, mm-hmm. It really helped me kind of find my own style along the way and try things that, like, you know, I might might not otherwise have come to my mind if I didn't have like these sporadic. Like, give you an example like it's just a stupid idea it's like i sampled um a cow in one of fma and 12 gauges songs i just yeah. there was just a sample on the side on the list i was like you know what it'd be really funny if i can work this in somehow i put it through a thousand different plugins it would didn't sound like a cow at the end <laughs> but it's, like things like that it was a really cool sound by the end of it and i was like yeah it's just the thought process that maybe i wouldn't have gone down if it went for adhd <laughs> hmm. i um I had a podcast that that came out a little bit re- more recently. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm I'm always a bit tentative around giving time frame for stuff because the 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 order in which I release things tends to be a bit like all over the place. Oh, do I want to release that one or this one or like? Mm-hmm. So sometimes they're not always like in order. And um, I, I was talking to a autistic rapper called SD Flame. And he he also has ADHD, and he was talking about sort of the benefits and and difficulties when it came to doing his rap music. You yeah. know, like he's very high tempo, and he's got he's very very like quick when he when he's speaking, and yeah, he's yeah. very sort of fast verbal. Um, and so, yeah. like a lot a lot of the people like who come up in the rap and then trying to sort of develop their skills, they're actually taught to go faster 
like the uh, taught to process things quicker and speak faster whereas yes. for him it was more about learning to like breathe and chill out and like um is it is very cool is yes. uh it kind of sounds a little bit like Eminem which yeah. um yeah. really really I'll really definitely check him out after that that's really funny that you say that though <laughs> Uh, like looking back and like the early stuff, I was just constantly like, da, 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 and that was like <laughs> my natural like go to. It was like how many syllables can I fit into this line yeah, yeah. to the point where yeah. on stage I was like, I couldn't breathe through half my songs. I'm not yeah. gonna lie, <laughs> turning into really Buster like, Rhymes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fully. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was very much the same kind of journey there, actually. And now, like you know, I've just finished what I would say is my mm -hmm. first official single after trying all sorts of different things. It's the first thing I'm really proud of, mm -hmm. um, and it's like going to be all over. Um, and I tried the exact opposite. You know, I tried some really slow flows and some other stuff. And that's something that I wouldn't have been able to do at the start because like you say, it's the speed comes naturally. <laughs> the ADHD. Yep, yep. I'm sure I can yep. word vomit all over for like hours if I wanted to. So I have to stop myself now. Fortunately, I'm quite good at just being like, right. Okay. Let's bring it down. <laughs> Bit of <laughs> detents. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I think brilliant. There's the, that, I've, spot on and i never thought about that it's really interesting that you mentioned that thank you very much for that dreadnought 